Welcome to the Spirit of Autism web TV show, providing practical tips, tools, and support for you and your loved ones with autism. I'm your host, Debbie Taylor, and this is my friend Austin joining us today. How y'all doing? Today's theme is summer safety. Now, as parents or caregivers of someone with autism, you know as well as I do that safety is a concern year-round, but it is heightened during the summer. One of those concerns is wandering. Earlier this week, I interviewed some friends of mine who created QR code ID. We're going to watch that video in a minute and they're going to share with you how they're helping families just like yours and mine when it comes to wandering. Let's check it out. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come and talk about QR code ID. I'm really excited to have you. And uh, I know that wandering is a huge and terrifying problem for us parents of children with autism and uh, I understand that like my son your son has actually gotten lost sometimes a couple of times and I know how terrifying that is <laughs> and is that how QR code ID was inspired uh, yes he was actually lost one time at school and another time at, at his day camp when they went down to California Adventure um, both times I heard about it after the event. Um, I still have to say I lost night to sleep um, hearing about it afterwards. It was terrifying. Mm -hmm. But I could not imagine what families go through if it's, um, you know, on their watch or, you know, during, um, you know, during the time that they're lost. They know they're knowledgeable of it. Right. right. And our son is kind of, I don't know, if everybody's so different, but he, he's sort of interesting because he'll bolt and then he'll stop. And so at school, he bolted, but he didn't run into the neighborhood. He, he was standing just outside the school, and a, a, a mother that happened to be coming late saw him and brought him into the school and stuff. So we've been fortunate so far like that. I, he, I don't, he doesn't want to escape. He just... He, right. But you never know when that's going to change. So. Well, with my child, one time he was playing in the front yard with a garden hose, no shirt, no shoes. I was, I just checked on him outside the kitchen window, I mean two seconds, and his sister got into a little scuffle with him, and she told him to get lost, and you know oh. that people with autism take things literally, and in the blink of an eye, he was gone. Wow. And, I mean, it took us three hours three hours my whole block got involved and you know I did call 911 and luckily you know one of the neighbors found him he was a few blocks up just sort of hiding under a bush playing and it, it was the most terrifying moment of my life I would have to say I can't imagine. Well, we just we just had, yeah we just had a person um, that uh, their their child was wearing one of our codes and they were at um, a big soccer tournament at a huge park and that one of their kids was in it, and each time they would uh, finish a game, they'd have to pitch, pick up their tent and move to the next, um, field. the next field. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, the mom thought the dad had the their five year old that's not, um, mostly nonverbal, and mm -hmm. the dad thought the mom did. And all of a sudden, they saw each other and realized that nobody did, and they started running in a panic, as you were. You know, your heart's right. just beating. And uh, all of a sudden, they got a phone call, and somebody found them, uh, found the, the child at the uh, sandbox, and they thought it was a joke. They were like, "I wonder what this is," and they just, they, which is sort of how we envisioned it. And uh, right. they'll scan it, and they scanned it, and they, oh, it's a telephone number, and uh, I wonder what happens if I call. <laughs> you know, and so, so before they had even a, a time to get into, um, into full panic mode, uh, fortunately, right. they got the phone call. That is such great news. Mm. And I know my son is verbal, but under duress, if you ask him a direct question, he might answer with something like cheeseburger or a sound from a Super Mario Brothers game, you know, yeah. and he wouldn't really call upon, even though he knows our address, you know, they're, you know, he's very good with numbers, but, you know, during that time of duress, he wouldn't probably call upon the information that he needs to communicate yeah. with someone. No, I actually have a member who, um, she has high functioning autism and she drives, she has a job, you know, she's very high functioning, but um, she goes into these panic attacks and when she starts to hyperventilate, she can't say anything. And so wow. she's had situations where the police have been called on her, uh, she's been smacked by people telling her to calm down. Um, oh my goodness. Which of course escalates it more for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and we should, we should probably tell people the types of things we have. 
Um, right. Yeah. I was just going to say we're talking about it because we know, but let's yeah. tell the audience what is yeah. QR code ID and how does it work? Um, well, we have um, QR codes. and uh, They're personal wearable QR codes. Mm -hmm. And across the top it says, if I need help, and then down the side it says scan or go to, and it gives our website, qrcodeid.org. So the person can either scan the code, the code with an app um, that's a free app on smartphones, or they can, as this illustrates, go to the website and push on found someone. This screen comes up. And then they input this unique number and push search, and then that will also take them to the person's profile. It, it's okay, everybody. I'm still here. <laughs> and in the profile, it's the person's picture, their name, um, the contact phone numbers, and there's a space for additional information where people are putting their medical uh, information like allergies or their favorite foods or and our sons, we have behavioral tips of how to best calm him down and what not to do to escalate him. That's fantastic. Uh, isn't it kind of risky to have that kind of information on the internet now? Well, we tell people <laughs> to not use last names and not to put, oh, get out of here, <laughs> and not to put um, their addresses. And only if they create their profile, so only put as much as they feel safe with doing. Yeah, and we also have this feature that. Um, I think is great for all all people, typical people and neurotypical, um, where you can forward the profile to yourself to your email. And so, in an emergency, if um, someone is lost or anything, they can you can forward to police or media um, mm -hmm. your profile. And in that in that email, you could change it. So, if the the police might need to see everything, but the press, you might want to take some of the more personal items out. And they can edit it before they send it, so they could add in if he's wearing a blue shirt, he's 5'1", whatever would help them yeah. to identify them. And also add in information of how to best approach the child, because sometimes they might bolt if you call their name. Uh -huh. So uh, just as an example, they could be singing the Barney song, and the child might come on out to sing with them. So <laughs> what... <laughs> Just an example, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but whatever you know works for that that family. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I understand you're saying it could be updated real time, it's right? Live. So if my child uh, wanders, I could you know after activating nine one one, of course, I could go onto the website and say he's wearing a Minecraft shirt, um, he's distressed, or he'll be best respond if you you know call him this name from this video game or. You know, yeah. really sensitive to sounds, turn off lights and sirens, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. And and that's Good a job. yeah. And the email is a uh, a free service of our free membership, so uh, everybody can just join up and get that. Uh, yeah. As soon as you do the free sign up, um, you can create the profile, edit the profile, send the emergency email, and even print your own code. And so uh, we understand that some of our members are getting very creative, and we love that they're putting um, the. One member has in her car the codes on both a window on each side of the car so that if there is an accident, the person that responds to them can scan the code and know how best to assist them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, so many to, things you can do. Yeah, and yeah. to help with some of these things, we want to do fundraising and stuff. So we're, we're um, a nonprofit now, and our federal paperwork is hopefully going to be through in a, a, any minute now. <laughs> and uh, we're called uh, If I Need Help. So uh, before we have QR code ID and that's now that's our a product. Okay. Yeah, okay. It, it's a DA, but it's our product and our our full company is uh, if I need help. Stay tuned for more info on that. That's <laughs> great. And you have some new products, I understand. Yes, we do. We're going to have an ID card soon, and that was inspired by the woman I was telling you about earlier, who um, has high functioning autism, but. Um, I had the police called on her a few times. So what she really wanted was me to put uh, do not call 911 on her card. And I said, well, honey, you might right. need that. And so um, on the card, there's a, the QR code, and then there's a, a, the name and the phone number, and then an area for seven bullet points about them. So on hers, we have, please do not touch me. Please talk to me calmly. Even tell me a joke to get my mind off of it. And please call my mom. Please remind me to take my anxiety medication. So it, whatever applies to that person and it is all, usually stays the same, they can have on their ID card. We're also coming out with the military-style uh, dog tags soon and uh, keychains. They're 
we have a smaller one and a bigger one that can be attached to purses and zippers and belt buckles and whatnot, backpacks. And, and I, I'm not sure if this would work for your son, but the uh, ID cards, uh, the way that some people are talking about using, especially the lady we, we made one, our, our prototype for, uh, is that she could speak. She and She's very high functioning, but in certain circumstances, the words just won't come out, and so she could just go. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, right. Our main product right now is the patches, which showed here, and they can be sewn on to people's clothing that they already have, and then we also have pins and clips, and so they don't always have to be wearing the same shirt. They can attach that to them, but... Um, my son, he has sensory issues, and he won't leave the pin and clip on, but other people uh, do, and they love them, and uh, we have one member in Georgia that he, um, his mom tried a lot of different IDs for him, and we gave him the clip, and he wears it all the time because he says it's his work badge. He won't yeah. leave the house without his work badge. He's pretty cute. <laughs> He's oh, adorable. Oh, and by, by the way, since we're on the internet, and this is like 20 frames per second, my, I was moving my hand like this. I might have moved it too fast, and then you wouldn't even see it. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, what I really love about why I jumped on board and got behind your product um, especially is you do see a lot of things on the market that are sort of GPS driven or low jack sort of big clunky wrist watches and things and, and I know with sensory issues, you know, that that's, you know, my son would I mean, I can't even get him to wear shoes or regular clothes sometimes, you know. I know he's not going to wear a big clunky wristwatch that is tracking his every move, you know. And if he did, he'd probably find a way to disable it because he takes apart everything. Oh. And so this is just a, a fantastic, practical product that I absolutely love. And whenever we go to an event especially, you know, like to see, you know, fireworks coming up or things like that, mm -hmm. absolutely he will have on his patch, you know, and shirt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, did you are, say oh, I'm sorry. We're very supportive of the GPS trackers, and we think they're a great product. We're, we're kind of a different category. It's for information and identification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand. And, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And oh, you said you, also, sorry? Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry. You, you go on. I know that uh, you said something about putting patches on your son's camp shirt that you... Yeah, um, I really need to ask goes, about what happened with that. Yes, he goes to day camp, and so we sew these on all his shirts because he, um, they do a field trip once a week. Like today, he's at Knott's Berry Farm, so he has his coat on in case he uh, splits from the group. That's great. Yeah. yeah, and the information, as we said earlier, can be changed in real time. So um, we can put in the camp counselor's phone number, so the person right there can be re um, the responsible party can respond right away. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, you know, it's not just people with autism that wander. This is a great idea for people with Alzheimer's. And I understand you also have a unique new member using it for something different. You um, you mentioned that in your email. Uh, yes, we have an tell me old, about that? Yes, please. Uh, we have an older gentleman that he's a cancer survivor. And since then, he has um, seizures every now and then. And to, once he comes out of the seizure, he'll be in a fog. Um, he had a seizure, and he woke up in the hospital a few hours later, and they, the nurse asked him, why do you have a feeding tube in your abdomen? And for the life of him, he could not figure it out. He couldn't remember for a long time. Um, so now he has the pins um, on his, on his um, he has this back brace. He has the pin attached to that. So if he has another seizure and fogs out, um, the people responding can uh, scan that and know what's happening with them. That's fantastic. Well, I certainly could talk about this probably for another hour with you because I'm oh, so excited about what you guys are doing, but <laughs> um, we probably need to wrap it up. So where can people find you if they want to learn more? Um, they can go to our website, qrcodeid.org. Yeah, we, we need to be able to, one, two, three, QRCodeID.org. QR <laughs> We're also on Facebook and Twitter, and I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. Great. All Thank right. Well, I'm really looking forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you so much for doing Thank this. Thank you, Debbie. Bye. 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 Joining me today is Austin Harris. 
He is a fellow uh, public safety volunteer with me. He's also a CERT instructor, a storm spotter, and a slew of other things. I know <laughs> <laughs> we could probably spend the rest of the show talking about all of your credentials, mm -hmm. but oh, most yeah. of all, Austin, you're my friend, and Definitely. I really appreciate you being here, and happy so birthday. Thank you. Also, yes, thank you for birthday. having me here. So we are going to talk about another part of summer safety, which deals with all of this severe weather mm -hmm. that's been happening. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about emergency preparedness. Yep. Why should we be prepared? Well, you want to be prepared for emergencies because in, in the event of a disaster, or be it a tornado or man-made, you want to have stuff with you so if you the emergency responders can't get to you immediately, you'll have enough supplies to where you can be ready to basically be on your own for up to 72 hours or three days or whatever the need may be. Now, FEMA recommends you have at least three days of supplies with you at your house or ready to go take with you if you have to go to a shelter. So you want to have stuff like food, water, um, a flashlight, emergency blanket, and a manual can opener because you have to realize you may not have power and you may have all these cans that you have to open by hand and I mean you don't want to use a knife for fear of cutting yourself right. so you want to have a manual can opener and things that don't require electricity to open different things. You want to have a good sturdy flashlight that's easy to use and, and extra batteries. And extra and batteries. Should they be packed in the flashlight or? You want to have a pair of batteries in the flashlight and you probably want to have an extra set with your kit and you want to have just just the basics of stuff like that and you want to have enough for 72 hours or three days and you want to have it in the central location where you can access it and maybe even have it in the bag or a trunk or a suitcase or something like that something ready in case you have to mm -hmm. and leave mm -hmm. in case quickly. you have to go to a shelter or leave your home for some reason because it was damaged or something and how much water is three days worth? You want to have one gallon of water per person per day. And that's basically for drinking, cooking, and minor hygiene. You have to realize you're not going to be taking a shower or doing all the hygiene stuff you may you usually do. So you want to have, you may want to have more than the recommended amount, or you may just feel comfortable with having the recommended amount. For me, I have a little extra in my, in my kit, so I always feel, just in case, I have extra, so. Mm -hmm. And isn't it expensive to gather all these materials? It's not really expensive, and what a lot of people don't realize is you have most of it already at home. It's just assembling it in one main location and mm -hmm. having it ready so you can leave or you can access it quickly if a tornado or a sudden storm or something happens like that. Right, so it's not just major disasters. Oh, no, it's not just major disasters. It could be everyday stuff. Like, you want to have, with your kit, you want to have, like, a first aid kit. I mean, we all get cuts and scrapes. Mm -hmm. And so, you want to have a good first aid kit, maybe just an all-purpose first aid kit from a pharmacy or big box store or something like that. Right, and pharmacy brings up another point. What mm -hmm. if you're on medications? You need to have at least three days of your personal medications. You also need to have over-the-counter medications because you may not have the opportunity to go down to the store to get the medications. And a lot of times what happens in the disasters is the stores will run out really quickly because everyone makes a mad dash all yes. at once to get it. So you may get there and everything's gone. So you want to have yourself a personal kit for each member of your family, one for the house and one to um, take with you if you have to leave. Okay, so each member of your family, so mm -hmm. children should as assemble their own kits? Mm -hmm. Children should have things that will comfort them and their kid. You won't have basic supplies for them too, but if you have such as an autistic patient in your house or someone with autism or even special needs, you need stuff like we have here to comfort them and keep them from... Mm -hmm. Yeah, their favorite mm -hmm. snacks, which can mm -hmm. really go for all children. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you brought up a great point with special needs. We have the added 
you know, stress mm -hmm. of all of the individual mm -hmm. unique needs that mm -hmm. some of our children have. So you want to think about sensory issues mm -hmm. and something that will help ease the stress and take away, take the focus off some sensory situations. Mm -hmm. So something like this would be a great mm -hmm. thing to keep in your kit. Mm -hmm. Glow sticks mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, the electronic age. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a good idea to just have the old fashioned playing oh, yeah. cards, I right? Love, Go I old school. I love to play cards and it's a fun game and there's so many different card games you can play with just one deck of cards that's endless and I mean you can entertain your kids play 52 pickup or mm -hmm. whatever and of course in case you get separated you should have pictures of your family members Definitely. in your kit as well as QR code ID <laughs> All, some other things you might consider having in your kit also you will have documentation of stuff like marriage licenses birth certificates um, house licenses and stuff like that also want to have if you take medications it might be a good idea to keep a personal list of all the medications you take I know for me I being a heart patient I take a lot of medications mm -hmm. also being a person with autism I do too so I keep a kit a little list with me in my wallet all, all the time so in Perfect. case I went down or there was an emergency they could access it. and I usually keep it by my driver's license because that'll be one of the first things they access at a scene of an emergency is your driver's license. That makes perfect sense. So what else do you have here? I have here a couple different varieties of foods you can buy. We've got the Mountain House um, freeze-dried foods. There's all kinds of freeze-dried foods. Mountain House makes one. Coleman, you know, the camping people make mm -hmm. one. They have um, what's called, they call them energy bars or mainstay bars. And they're basically just dehydrated food and proteins that are built into a little energy bar and they taste a little bit, a little bit like lemon cake but they're kind of dry and stuff and that's it's basically three days of nutrients and supplements in there to uh, keep you going if the worst was to happen right but i mean you want to personalize your kit too you want to get stuff you'll eat and you'll like and especially with kids these days how picky they are right and, and not with, just picky but mm -hmm, special, special needs free so mm -hmm. maybe some gluten-free mm -hmm. granola bars and non-perishable things like mm -hmm. that and they make all kinds of stuff out there i mean you'd be surprised what you could get at the store for very cheap i mean you could make a basic kit for probably 50 to 100 dollars for your entire family and have all the basic necessities mm -hmm. and you don't even have to do it right away right you can you assemble it a little bit over time mm -hmm. anything is better than nothing mm -hmm. if you have just a trash bag you can for a tent, a poncho, to throw stuff in there. It's great. That sounds like I have a new Saturday night activity. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And what about um, what about your pets? Your pets, you want to have enough food and water for them as well. You, it's generally the same ratio. If you have one gallon for you, you want to have one gallon for your pet because they need water and they'll need mm. food. So you want to have stuff like that. And you also want to rotate it because... Pet food will good eventually point. go bad. These will eventually expire. And a good thing with the foods, a lot of the things I like to do with them, I like to try them. I will, I'll get a group together and we'll all go in and buy a different, couple different kinds and we try them. Some are bad, some are okay, some are really good. So you have to just try them out and see what's to best know what for you're you. dealing with ahead of time plus with autism you have textures and stuff like that That's and true. some of these foods the textures can be very odd and different and some are really appetizing and appealing very good and you said rotate them out about how often should you want to rotate with water you want to rotate about every six months i'd say every six months you want to check your kit you want to go through it update it take out old things mm -hmm. rotate stuff like that and as your kids grow their um, needs will change too their favorite hobbies their favorite toys may come in in and out to play so you may want to rotate that as well too that's an excellent point in mm -hmm. fact mine was outdated even mm -hmm. though we teach this to people mm -hmm. and i went through mm -hmm. and found some old thomas the tank <clears throat> engine mm -hmm. you know little train cars mm -hmm. and i went whoa that brings back memories oh, so yes yeah. indeed rotate oh, yeah. them out and i know mine has grown over the years i started out with a small little kit and i realized well i have a four-person family plus two dogs and a cat at my house 
you have to meet the needs of the times and the amount of people you have. Mm -hmm. And for me, I usually keep a little extra just in case because I'm going to want to help people and help people in my neighborhood and just, just in case. And it's always good to be neighborly and help your neighbor and all that stuff. And uh, another point with autism, uh, noise is a huge issue. So mm -hmm. maybe having some headphones or noise, I mean, these are earplugs, or noise-canceling headphones, depending on what your child will tolerate, that's mm -hmm. a good idea as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think... We're getting, Anything we're else getting, that you need to tell us about disaster preparedness? Well, you want to have things like a weather radio. I know a weather radio is a great thing to have. Um, there's text alerts out there. Um, one great website to go to is ready.gov. They have a lot of information on how you can prepare. It's a FEMA-run website. And there's a plethora of information out there that you can find. So just... Check out the internet, buy stuff in bulk, and there's, it's, it's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could also, for other suggestions of what, what to put in your autism or special needs, 72-hour kit, you can go to my website, which is mm -hmm. spiritofautism.org. Mm -hmm. You can also find out more about QR code ID from there, um, as well as going to the QR code ID website that they talked about in the video. Mm -hmm. And um, we thank you very much for joining us today mm -hmm. and Austin thank you so much for being here thank you for having me Debbie I really appreciate you giving me an opportunity to come out all right so we'll see you soon mm -hmm. see you next time are you looking for a great night out are you in the Atlanta Georgia area are you looking to check out some live awesome music during the week they have Kino poker tournaments horseshoes and special events it's all at the Moon Shadow Tavern. That's at 3976 Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker, Georgia. That's the Moon Shadow Tavern. Give them a call, 770-674-2133. Check out their selection of great food, friendly service. Visit their website at msttucker.com. That's www.msttucker.com. Moon Shadow Tavern is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on www.americanheartsradio.com. Make sure you told them that American Hearts Radio sent you. Visit their website, check out their great selection of food, appetizers, wings, burgers, sandwiches and wraps, steaks and chicken, salads and sides. Also their drink specials. Live music during the week. Check them out. Give them a call. 770-674-2133. 